Good morning, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Favorite Live Album by Year. This is, of course, the show we're doing throughout the month of September, each and every day. 30 days, 30 years of classic live albums, 1968 to 1998. I saw a few people asking questions. Peter, are you going to be continuing on with the live album show this month? Well, I've only just said every day for the last, uh, what, 14 days that the show will be running each and every day in September. So yes, I'm still continuing on with this. Uh, this has proven to be a pretty popular little show theme, and I've enjoyed revisiting some of these live albums as well. So here we have arrived at 1981. We are now fully into the 80s. Uh, another good year. Some really good live albums crossing different genres. I had like five or six really good ones that I was kind of choosing from. In the end, though, two really stood out for me a little above and beyond. The others, uh, I just realized I was kind of giving something away here. But uh, released October 29th, 1981 on the Anthem label produced by Terry Brown. Recorded at the uh, Apollo and Glasgow, is that how I say it, guys? Am I correct for all of my UK fans? Uh, Glasgow, the Apollo in Glasgow, right? I think that's not Glasgow, right? It's Glasgow. Uh, also at the Forum in Montreal, of course, we're talking about Rush Exit. Stage left. Uh, yeah. Great stuff here. Uh, I actually also saw them during this time period. Loved it. Great tour, you know, the Moving Pictures tour, and then the tour after that, which became the Exit States Left tour. And, uh, you know, great kind of imagery here on the album cover, the CD cover, because it kind of takes little things from all of their albums, which I thought was kind of genius. Uh, great performances. Maybe not the best sounding live album ever. I was actually listening to this at the gym yesterday while I was uh, doing some laps around the track and thinking to myself, man, I love these performances, but you know what? Now all these years later, this album doesn't really sound all that great. It, it, it gets better as the album goes on, but like the first half of it's kind of muddy sounding, but the performances are absolutely spectacular. This is Rush we're talking about here. And you get a lot of their best songs. You know, The Spirit of Radio kicks it off, Red Barchetta. Man, I'm almost going to sneeze. I think I could put it off. Let's see. Can we can we get through this? I don't know. That's weird. It's the first time. I don't think it's ever happened where I felt the need to sneeze right in the middle of recording a video. Oh, a YYZ or YYZ, as some of our non uh, US people would say, is brilliant on here. Uh, Passage to Bangkok is great. I think it's even better than the, uh, the, the studio version on 2112. Um, Closer to the Heart is good. I'm not a big fan of Closer to the Heart, to be honest with you. I could do without that. Uh, Beneath, Between, and Behind is pretty good. Nice and rocking. Uh, Jacob's Ladder is awesome. You got Brune's Bane. The Trees is really good. Xanadu is killer on here. For my money, it's the end of this that really kicks into high gear. The whole thing is good, but uh, Free Will is terrific with a great Alex Lifeson solo. Tom Sawyer is really good on here. And of course, my favorite song on this album, La Villa Strangiato. Of course, the definitive version of that song is here. I mean, you know, Rush, 1980, going into 1981, just at the top of their game, without question. This is great. You know, we've talked a lot about on this channel before about the fact that, you know, there's fade outs and things at the ends of songs. So, you know, this isn't a perfect live album. I think if you were to stack this up against All the World's a Stage, I might I would give the edge to that uh, a bit because I just think it's just a little more powerful and truly live sounding, right? And, you know, this comes across as, you know, they did a lot of editing in the studio and it's not the greatest sounding recordings and, you know, you got the fade outs, but it's still spectacular. You know, I mean, <clears throat> if, if All the World's a Stage is a 10 out of 10, this is a 9 or a 9.5 out of 10, right? They're, they're that neck and neck. But yeah, that's my favorite four. Um, and it's always weird when I see my own reflection in the CD jewel case. Hello, how are you? Um, yeah, that's my number one. Uh, yeah, I've just I've listened to it so much over the years. I still listen to it. Just a great era for Rush. Uh, but my runner-up, you know, again... This is probably their definitive live album, and they've got a few live releases. But uh, this one is just, uh, it's so much of its era and its time, and I think it never quite got the recognition it deserves as being one of the landmark heavy metal hard rock live albums of all time. 
it's that good. Uh, released June 22nd, 1981. Recorded February 7th through the 20th of April at all sorts of different venues, right? I think it's always up for debate in 1980. Also, there's a couple uh, things taken from uh, March 28th through 30th, 1981. Queens Hall, uh, City Hall, Newcastle. I mean, you know, the, 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 there's all this debate. You know, people always thought most of this came from the actual Hammersmith Odeon, uh, where in fact that much, if not all of it, did not come. At least that's what I've always been told. Who knows? It's up for debate. Anyway, Motorhead, No Sleep Till Hammersmith, uh, also came out on the on the Bronze Records label produced by uh, Vic a mailer or Mailey, however he says his name. So yeah, I mean, this is just a killer live album. I remember buying this on LP back in the day and just falling in love with it. And again, uh, at the time, this was basically almost like your greatest hits of Motorhead up until that point. So many great tracks on here, you know, kicking off with Ace of Spades, Stay Clean, Metropolis, The Hammer, Iron Horse, No Class, Overkill, so many great tracks from those first couple of albums, right? Uh, we Are the Road Crew, which destroys on this so good capricorn man capricorn and metropolis how great are those tracks kind of like mid-paced kind of like atmospheric just kind of almost creepy heavy rock tunes man so good of course you got motorhead bomber uh and then my cd version's got some uh, bonus tracks you got over the top and an alternate version of capricorn and train kept it rolling but the original album itself is just really really good another one of those should have been a double right um, absolutely, but yeah, this is just great, high energy, grimy, just pedal to the metal Motorhead by the original, or not the original, the, the classic trio, right? Filthy, Fast Eddie, and Lemmy. Sadly, all three of them are gone. So that is my runner-up for today. No sleep till Hammersmith, and then, of course, number one, Exit Stage Left from Rush, Curious to see what you guys think uh, as far as your favorite runner-up from 1981. So, yeah, another good year, man. Some, I mean, there was a great guitar trio album I was considering for this. Uh, there's a few others, right? There were some really, really good ones, but ultimately I think those two, uh, you know, really took the top spots for me. There was another guy who plays a white Gibson Flying V, at least at the time anyway. That was in the running as well. Um but yeah, ultimately these two guys, these two albums were what really drew it for me, and uh, I think just have kind of really oh, has stood the test of time, both of them. Because that's another thing I look at. It's like how many of these picks of mine, uh, or how many of these choices or considerations, have really stood the test of time for me over the years. Loved them back then. Still play them a lot to this day. There you have it. Visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Coming up, uh, future programming tonight on the channel, Tuesday night in the Prague seat. We've got a whole slew of folks joining tonight. We're going to talk about our favorite five Prague or Prague-related albums from the years that we graduated high school, we graduated school, right? So uh, whether we were listening to them back in the day or whether we have, in recent years, grown to really love these albums, but they came out in the year that we graduated school. So uh, that'll be really interesting. Kind of a cool cool topic. And uh, so stay tuned for that tonight. Tomorrow we've got uh, What's Hot with Sea Tranquility Day. Hopefully I can crank out at least one tomorrow. Just so everybody knows, I've got a ridiculous schedule tomorrow. So there is a possibility uh, I may only be able to do one tomorrow. Maybe none. We'll see. Tom tomorrow's going to be slim pickings for the What's Hot show, but that's okay because I've gotten a lot of really cool things in lately that I'm still trying to find time to listen to. So if you don't get anything tomorrow, it may mean for a more bulked up series of shows next week. So uh, we'll see how that goes tomorrow. Uh, Thursday, The Monsters Den. Of course, it's bad sequels day on the Monsters Den on Thursday, so stay tuned for that. We're going to be looking at some of the, uh, the horror sequels that really suck. Uh, Friday morning at the Funhouse, Martin Popoff and myself will be talking about some of our favorite hired guns, those guys who seem to show up on every album, but never really stayed anywhere long enough, right? So hired guns, and then Sunday we've got album homework assignment with Louis Nasser and Chris Allo dueling it out. 
they've been given their assignments. Well, they've given their assignments to each other. They've been listening to their albums. So on Sunday, they will each be talking about those albums that they've been checking out. Uh, they were given to them by the other and what they like about them, what they don't like about them, and would they buy them, stream them, or forget them. So that's coming up on Sunday. Stay tuned for that and probably all sorts of other stuff here on the channel. We've got more uh, album rankings coming up in, in the works. We've got Simon Bray and myself. We're going to be ranking our top five Charlie Daniels band albums for all you Southern Rock fans and more Southern Rock. Doc Holliday, a really good underrated uh, Southern Rock band from the 80s. We're going to be ranking those albums as well. Uh, we're also going to be doing the Marshall Tucker Band probably over the next couple of weeks, so uh, stay tuned for all that and more here on the channel. Uh, I've got other ranking shows also that I'm working on too, so uh, lots happening. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content. If you want to make a channel donation to help us keep buying more music and movies and things to talk about here on the channel, the link to the Ko-Fi page is below, as well as our merch page where you can get all sorts of Sea Tranquility stuff and uh, seatranquility.org, the webzine that is celebrating 20th anniversary this year here in 2021. So thanks for watching. I am Pete Pardo. We'll see you again soon, all the damn time. Take care. Bye-bye.